So this video is about a bizarre problem. It's with a Seat and it's the Seat Leon. I'll show you the it's a 1.2 TSI where it's there. And what it was, the engine was idling rough and they had a couple of check engine codes. It was one for the camshaft crankshaft correlation and other was about fuel pressure too high too low. So there's the, the codes displayed on the Veris. You can see that crank cam correlation fuel pressure too high and too low exactly the same as it said in the VO tail tool. The reason I couldn't go into it on the Veris was my software is not up to date. This car was a 2014 and I've only got 14.4 and it didn't cover the, the C and this is the 5F model. I'm sure the older one was the 1P so the snap on doesn't cover that but maybe if I was using the the expert settings, I don't know if anybody's used that in a Volkswagen uh, see it, that would have worked, but anyway there it's also displayed on the hotel machine so when you cleared the codes, the one that came right back was low fuel pressure uh, it came back immediately followed by the rest later on I just like it idle so this thing was running terrible, so <clears throat> one of the things you can see, the first thing I looked at said change oil level now, so I was wondering, what was it? this has got a, it controls this one, the intake camshaft via this valve here, so it's variable valve timing, so I'm wondering if dirty oil is causing this problem, it really did sound like it was a timing chain problem initially, I'll let you hear it, but so that's the, the valve that controls this here, also got a camshaft a position sensor, so I checked that, but there's a good five volts coming out of that. So it was a five, it was a middle pin, it was a five volt square wave, and it was five volts in the ground, so it was fine. I couldn't get to the camshaft, the, the sorry, the crankshaft position sensor, it was right down the back, uh, so never bothered that. The plugs were totally suited, they were all fouled, this thing and running rough. As you can see, it's a high pressure pump there. You can see the, the metal pipe going into the thing there. It's hard to get angles on this thing. So, to recreate the symptom, what I'll do, I'll let you hear this. Uh, I'll just let you hear it, I'll not tell you what it is and see what, see what you think. We could pause this video, two seconds. So that's a car running, and you can hear the noise, I'll just let you hear that. It really does sound like it's coming for the this end, it sounds like it's for the camshaft end or the timing belt end, but that was that was all fine. So what it really was is it's, it's coming for the high pressure pump, and to prove it, I disconnected the wiring from the thing. There it's here, and that noise comes back immediately once you disconnect the wiring. So I'll plug it back in, and I'll let you hear it when I plug this thing back in. I'll let you see the fuel pressures. So when it's disconnected, it drops into about. Yeah, well, there you go. Oh, come on, focus. It goes down to about 22 kilopascals, so I don't know what that equates to. And uh, I'll, I'll show you on the screen. But it should be roughly going about 120 bar, which is 120 megapascals. So that's just running from the. must be the low pressure pump. But I'll, I'll put the car off. Just see the difference this makes. I was absolutely convinced that it was a, a camshaft issue. But there you go. See, there you go. Oh, I come up there, it says change oil now. So we're going to do that first and see how this goes. So what I'll do, I'll plug this thing back in. And you'll see how that symptom disappears. So that's... Yeah, let's see that... That's it plugged back into the high pressure pump. Let me see how this starts up now. You've got to push the, push the clutch in this car to get to start. There you go. The symptoms disappear. Perfect. 
So at the very beginning when I thought it was a camshaft issue, I decided to do a crank and amps uh, test and you can see that there that uh, the peak amps are at the top of my <laughs> I set it up for the peak amps to be at the top so you see it's pulling 120 amps mind you that's on a warm engine when it's cranking but I had another uh, little 1.2 pole and it was roughly the same so it was about 1.3 amps so as you can see the peaks up the top all look great so I've got good compression there and uh, that's why I really didn't want to go down the, the timing belt road but in saying that when I then looked at the scan tool and it gave us this information that the gap has been found so you're immediately thinking from here that it's a cam sh camshaft crankshaft correlation problem but on that little hotel tool this is the MS905 it was one of the settings I hit I think it said something like reset or reset adaptions or something like that I can't even remember but when I then went I kind of shut the car down and went back at the scan tool I then got this information on it, I'll let you see the picture of that. It then said engine starts start start synchronization EPM mode okay and the EPC light disappeared on the dashboard but you can still see that the fuel pressures are high, they're still at 220-230 bar. So I then shut the engine down again and the, this is what came up the next time. The fuel pressures had corrected themselves and the thing was running nice and smooth. So wow, where do we go from here? That's the, that's the, you can get the fuel pressure also in the little auto tool, auto tool. but what I was going to say, the fuel pressures in this car are quite high, even when it's running right, because it was in closed loop, it was fine, because uh, I was working on a Ford uh, B-Max, and it was only like something like 30 bar, but this thing's at 120 bar at idle, so very high, and you can see there, there's that start, start synchronisation, so... I wonder if it caused this problem, I think there's a couple of things, the fuel level was low, uh, that could be one of them because they put more fuel in it. The engine oil was quite dirty, even though it said it had been serviced. But when I changed the filter, it looked a wee bit rust in the filter. There's only forty thousand miles on this car, so it's uh, the girl says the car's running great now. I give it an engine flush and put new oil in it. So whatever, <laughs> been a combination of mucking about and resetting things and that, it, it seems to have cured the problem. So maybe a regular service and is the answer to this problem. Anyway, I hope that helps someone out there. Cheers.